All right. Thanks, uh, thanks for jumping on board with us today for your Expert Mentors Live weekly training call. I've um, got, uh, got myself, John Kitchens. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm a senior strategic business advisor um, and head of coaching and mastermind for NAEA. Been business partners with Jay and Michael for, uh, for quite some time. Um, go back to 2004 and, and the roots even run deeper than that. But uh, uh, we've got uh, Mr. Jarrett Gent on with us this morning. Welcome, Jarrett. Welcome. Hey, good, before, good, good to have you on, man. So <clears throat> before we, uh, before I hand the call over to you, I just want to kind of share with everybody, you know, really what Expert Mentors Live is all about and, and really why we're excited to have this time with all of you. So what, uh, what this time in the calendar, what Expert Mentors Live gives us, it gives us the opportunity to, to really be able to tap into the honey badger power of, of the group. And, you know, um, there are so many talented and amazing people um, inside of the community that really want to add value and give back. So what Expert Mentors Live is going to allow us to leverage the power of the community uh, for all of, all of our benefit with, with live weekly trainings produced by some of the best agents on, on the planet. So these calls are going to be every um, Wednesday at noon central. Uh, so make sure you guys have it in your calendar and, um, you know, make sure you, you tune in to join us. So um, another thing, and, and Jay mentioned this, is that we want you guys to be able to leverage these trainings in your agent attraction efforts by sending the invite link out to, to other, you know, um, through your expert mentor site, get the link out um, to be able to bring people on to give them a bite-sized sample of the training that they're going to get while... Um, on board with us here in the Honey Badger Nation. So um, we're super excited to have Jared on with us and really to share today's, uh, today's topic on how to turn one listing into five sales. Um, <clears throat> a little bit about Jared um, being a serial entrepreneur and uh, really started uh, your first business at age 12 um, and really grew up, you know, the creative mind and always dreaming of the next big idea. Um, early 20s had already started a family a business and purchased several properties, which is, uh, which is awesome, and attained um, his real estate license in 1998, um, applied the work ethic and knowledge to build uh, Remax office, become the number one sales um, in, in production in California and Hawaii and number four in the world. So his out-of-the-box approach to the business and client-centric model um, took him into the top 10% in real estate sales worldwide for five years. Um, today, supporting his wife's business, invest in real estate, and continue to share his passion um, that the real estate industry is changing right before your eyes. Um, clear vision on the real estate world and business today with firsthand experience, and he just loves sharing and, and giving back. Um, to, to mentor and coach others to exceed and help achieve their goals in life. So without further ado, um, we're going to turn it over to Jarrett and, uh, and welcome. Thanks. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. And I'm excited to be here and be in an opportunity to actually give back to the community as well. Um, but, you know, also to be linked arms with incredible people within our group and within uh, our company. It, it's exciting. Um, in fact, you know, I think we all have said it's been a while since um, I've had this much fun. I share this system that I had devised several years ago when I was focused more on the listing end of the business. And I, I want to jump right into that now. I want to kind of tie in uh, Michael and Wood's um, great uh, their segment last week. I thought it was really good because one of the things I've been saying for years is you have to be, you have to become an expert marketer and a lead generation person, or you're going to end up what working for one or being a part of a group that has one. And that's okay. But that's kind of key in this business is instead of thinking like a sales agent, start thinking like a marketer. And I think that will change your business right there. There's a couple of steps, but I'm excited to be here. I wanted to kind of share real quickly why I created this back to coaching and mentoring and the importance of it. So I had a coach and mentor years ago when I was focused at Remax as being a listing agent. When we got in the business, it, what were we told? If you want to exist, you have to list. And what I learned real quick was that you get a glass ceiling and listings are tough to acquire. It's a hard road. And I realized real quick, I wanted to expand 
and grow my business, but what was the opportunity to do that? And I had a coach or mentor say, you need to remove your focus and open your mind a little bit more on marketing the listings that you have instead of selling them. And when I thought about that, that's what kind of brought me to this one to five system that over the next couple of years I created. So, you know, I think the reason this system works is that the key part of it is, is goals and accountability, which is what drives success in our industry. Um, and without them, it's a tough road um, and you have to have mentors and coaches that hold you accountable. What's unique about this system is, is that the built-in accountability is that when you have a one to five goal, taking one listing and turn into five sales, the goal is five. The accountability is if you don't reach five, you possibly have failed. The second part of that is, is that it, you can easily see when you, when I unpack this, you'll see that you can actually do more than five sales. So, you know, I, I wanted to start with, I kind of came across this the other day, and I just kind of a quick quote, and I think this is important. So everybody that's watching, the first thing you want to do right now is actually, there's no fancy presentations, no whiteboards or anything. In fact, this is the first time I've ever unveiled this to anybody outside my own team or brokerage. Um, but take a pen, grab a, grab a notepad, start taking some notes, and uh, here's, here's what I want to share with you. A dream written down with a date becomes a goal. A goal broken down into steps becomes a plan. A plan backed by action becomes reality. So I thought it was fitting and I wanted to share that. And here's why. Because in our industry, we were taught sometimes to what? Set goals based on a one year income. And I think it's a little old school and archaic, right? So what happens is, is how much, how, how much do you want to earn every year? And then we would do the inverted math to work into it, right? That was what we did. So the problem is, is that the mind works in mysterious ways. It works better off success, right, than failure. And short-term goals that are obtainable, I think, inspires you to do more. So I think that that's kind of fitting as we dive into um, to this, because this one-to-five system is really incorporating that every listing I take, my goal is to get five transactions and you can track it. So I'll into that and unpack that a little bit right now. Um, and John, did you have anything at this point or any thoughts right now Why, before I jump right into it? No, this is great. Just um, you're, you're cutting out just a little bit. So I um, okay. just want to make sure that, that we miss it. If anything's missed or you kind of freeze up a little bit, I'll, I'll – bring everybody back up to speed, but no, I'm excited to jump in and, and I, I love what you've said, the one to five and just the, just the mindset and, you know, really that built in accountability, your goal is five and um, you nailed it and maybe say it again, the, right. It's not, it's not to, it's not just to sell it. It's to market it. Right. And I'm going to actually relocate over here because I think possibly this might help. Cool. But that's okay. Let's see if this, Hopefully that's a little better. Cool. Is that better? Yep. All right. Sometimes you got to do that in today's world. I'm just <laughs> yeah. here at my house and wanted to do this. So, okay, here's, here's what I've got. One, one second here. While Jared's jumping on, so for those of you that jumped on um, a little late, just joining us, um, Jared's going to jump into the one to five goal on uh, taking a listing. He made a, he made a, a, a quote, a comment, a statement earlier that, you know, it's not about just getting your listing and selling it. It's about getting the listing and marketing it. So this is uh, um, good stuff. Got my notepad ready and uh, ready to follow along here with you. Yeah, let's do it. So here's kind of what we're, we're, we're basing this on. And some of this, when you hear it initially, it's going to seem a little, get this back here. What, it's going to seem a little bit uh, slow and archaic, but stick with me, okay? So Obviously, the first goal in a one to five transaction is getting a listing. So when you acquire the listing, let's assume you've done that, the key part of that is to sell it. A lot of people believe that you take a listing and it automatically sells. Now, we happen to be in a seller's market sure. where, you know, advantageously, it's pretty easy to sell properties. The problem is, is people fail to realize there's still a lot of expires in our market. A lot of homes still don't sell. Okay. So... This is a key element is understanding the pricing of the home to do the proper marketing. Okay. So what I mean when I talk about pricing of the home is using a pricing pyramid to basically attract 
so that you're marketing to the masses of buyers. The, that's the key element to start, is that the pricing is correct to get the most eyeballs on that home. That's the whole start of the success in this system. Um, and often we see homes where, even in today's market, they're going for top dollar. But again, I don't want to dive a whole bunch into the pricing pyramid here, but if anybody understands that pricing spectrum is that when you hit about three to 5% under true market value, the, the, the marketability and the eyes on that property goes up 75, 80%. That's what you want to do. You want to draw people to the listing. So your first goal is easy. You sell it. You, you let's, so let's assume that you have this seller property and you end up in a situation where you've done what? You've actually sold the property. Okay. You're at your one sale, the one goal. Okay. We've got four left here. So the second part of that is the seller that's your client I can't tell you the amount of times that even myself, when I was focused on listings, I didn't want to work with buyers. But over the years, I learned how many people I came in contact with that had their home listed, but yet they weren't working with their listing agent. Yep. And I, I thought to myself, once I realized that, wow, here's a lot of bit missed opportunity for business. So how many people, I'm curious, when they go into a listing appointment, get an exclusive buyer's representation agreement? How many people talk to them and understand what their next move is? Well, this is where you're trying to obtain that second sale. Now, I understand a lot of people move out of your market. Uh, people move out of the area. They relocate state to state. That's where a network of professionals that you can refer becomes huge. But again, securing that business is the second goal. That's the part two of the, of the one to five strategy. But I, I will tell you, the, still today, the amount of people that I ask did you get a buyer's representation agreement with your client? And did you understand truly when they're making this move, what they're really trying to obtain anyway through this move and the ability to represent them? It, 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 it's overlooked a lot. So that's kind of piece two, a representation agreement through that relationship of that listing. Okay. So we'll assume that obviously that seller can buy. So that's, you've already, re, you've already done two, of the five. The third is a client referral. And I want to spend a minute talking about client referrals. You have to, you have to deliver an exceptional uh, experience to people if you want to get referred. But here's what happens. I think you might agree. I think that most people don't ask for a referral and they don't ask for it at the right time. They don't ask for the business. And when they ask, they don't ask at the right time. Typically what people think is when I want to get a referral from my client is, hey, we closed it. We're at the closing table here. They may or may not even ask for the business. But more importantly, they think that's the time. The sale's over. Okay, we're moving on. Actually, what I have found, I think it's a bad time. And here's why. Moving sucks. Who, who wants to move? Okay, so when you're in a mindset of moving, do you think that you being a referred agent is top of mind? It's not. You're not. Because they've got everything else in the world that they're dealing with, and I guarantee you, you're the last piece that's important to them, no matter how good of a job you did. So here's a couple of tips that I think will help people. Number one, ask for the business. Ask for the business. Yeah. It, it blows my mind how many people don't ask for them to refer, to refer them, okay? And I'm gonna dive a little bit deeper in the timing of when to do it, okay? The timing is, is that when you first enter into that relationship and you are having the property listed and you're starting to put the marketing together and a sign out front, okay? That's the time, here's why. Everybody in the neighborhood, everybody they know, their friends and family are gonna learn about what? Their move. It's going to come up. So what you need to do is you need to coach your clients on, hey, when, when your neighbor comes over and asks you about your move and you've been here for years and they talk about anything of their possibility of moving, do me a favor. Put me in contact with them because I want to see if possibly have a, they have a buyer or somebody that they know for your home. Put me in contact with them. So the other key element of getting that referral is when you deliver on an exceptional service, but during the period of 
multiple offers and you're moving into a contract phase, you know, and they're looking at you and they're, everybody's excited. You've done a great job. You've brought them over asking price and you've got the terms that they want. This is the ideal time that they feel like you're a hero. Utilize it. Ask them, hey, here's the biggest favor that you could do me. I would appreciate it if you would refer me because what's going to happen now is as you start talking about we sold our home, all your friends, peers, family, and neighbors are going to say, wow, well, you're really moving. This is an opportunity for you to help me. And this is the best compliment that you could ever provide to me, which is referring me for what we've done here. I think that's key. So that referral, making sure that the experience with the client is number three on your list. That's three deals right there. A referral. And if I were to be completely candid, um, the expectation that we set is three referrals in 60 days from a client. That's the expectation that we set as a goal from every client relationship. But we definitely want to try to obtain one in the first period of the 30 days, let's say. Um, so now you've got your three deals. Let's assume you've done these things correct and it gets a little more tricky on four and five, meaning here's where being a marketer and not a salesperson is key. So I'm gonna kind of dive into this a little bit because I can't talk about everything today of the systems for open houses and marketing and signage and how critical they are and how often they're overlooked. But I do wanna share a couple of things to get your fourth transaction, okay? Your goal through your marketing efforts, your signage, your ads, your neighborhood work, and all that thing is to acquire a buyer, okay? That's your fourth goal is to acquire that buyer. How do you go about it? Well, again, it goes back to point one. Did you price the property in a fashion to where it's going to draw the most looks and opportunity? Have you done the things marketing wise? And I'm going to talk about a few that are going to bring the most amount of people to looking at this and interested in this property. And the one that's often overlooked still today is a sign, a simple real estate sign. We spend so much time talking about the internet and Facebook ads and all these other places to get leads that I think the opportunity that's missed, it's right in front of you. It's that listing and that sign. Still 70% of people find out about real estate, including everybody in the neighborhood, is through the sign. It's not through the internet. So they find the sign, they're driving around, that's what people do today, and that sign marketing is key. What does that mean? Well, are you a person still putting flyers on a property? Are you still politely, I say, that old school? Or do you use a call capture system? Do you use a text capture system? Um, is the marketing on the signage correct? And this is where I'm going to be a little kind of blunt and kind of just the way I am, T-shirt and all today, is that what I see is that if you're, a, if you're a me marketer and you're in this business, you're doing it wrong because it's not about you, okay? So don't be a me marketer. If if 70% of your sign is your photo, you're a me marketer. Marketing is, is driving traffic in people and getting them to inquire about a property so that you can what? Capture them, have a system where you can follow up and call capture systems are still out there and they still work whether you use text or not. But here's a couple of things. So let's say you take off the flyers, you know, you explain to the clients why you don't do flyers. There's an easy, valid reason why you don't want to do them. We could go on and on about that. But you've got the flyers off the sign. But let me ask you this. Do you have a call capture call to action? Do you have a writer that says price to sell? Price to sell is the number one key on a flyer in marketing that drives people to inquire about a price in this market. Price to sell, what does that mean? Are they motivated? It's price to sell. And if you hit the pricing spectrum correct, going back to point one, you're, you're doing a great job. So specifically, I want to kind of give a layout of a sign. So you put a rider on it and the property has a beautiful pool, okay? Now, with it having a pool and you having a rider out there and you have a price to sell, don't you think that if it's in an incredible neighborhood that if people drive up and the way they can get the information on this property is to simply clean in the streets so um, they can simply uh, inquire through a text capture because they that's how they get the piece of information don't you think the chances of capture them are larger see here's what I see is that agents are real quick to give out all the information and they miss the marketing if you give a person everything they want 
they're going to do yes or no. So they're going to say, wait, I, I, you might have said too much. Um, so you got to be real careful in your marketing remarks. Um, you got to improve in what you say. You have to improve in what you don't say. You have to improve in the amount of photos and how you do your photos and how the marketing speaks. Um, here's what ends up happening that I see a lot with photography is that you give out 30, 35 photos, which sometimes you're telling too much of a story. Some things are left to be researched and to be inquired about. You know, some of them need to be done in that fashion. So that marketing through that sign becomes key to drive more leads and opportunities. And when you employ these strategies, you will instantly realize that, whoa, I've got inquires coming out of the woodworks. Now here's the other next marketing that kind of plays into this. And I know this one's gonna be a bit crazy for listing agents, um, is open houses and the marketing part of that and the pre-marketing. But I, I gotta share this with you. Again, back to the signage. Um, when you pre-market a property properly and you expose it to the market over the appropriate period of time, you're gonna get the masses of looks on it. Don't be so quick to pull the trigger. Have an actual pre-marketing plan that you share with your clients. That you'd say, these are my seven steps and why we're gonna do them to get you top dollar for your home. And once they understand those steps, they're gonna be a part of that plan. We actually use a document that's basically a marketing seller instructions. When they understand that they can get more money with better marketing and larger exposure, they're all over it. Um, so regarding kind of the open house part of it, you know, again, going back to the signage, an open house rider is key to drive traffic if you're gonna hold it open for that first weekend of maximum exposure. But the amount of properties I see that they don't even bother putting that information on there. Drive people to your listing. Drive people to your open house. So you can easily acquire your fourth deal through your marketing efforts, through your own signage, through your own open house, and through your own marketing systems that you're doing right there through your listings. Now, here's I know where it gets sketchy for people. I was this way for a long time. If if you're a solo agent, that might work. If you're a listing agent, you're part of a team or you don't have a team, you know, it becomes a lot to handle. But for brokers that have teams, you know, train them, get them involved with your open house opportunities and teach them the appropriate ways. Because, you know, the thing that I've heard for years is that open houses don't work. Um, yet my wife's built an empire on open houses. Um, you know, I mean, it's, it's crazy, it's like the car lot thing. The amount of open houses that we frequent and the first thing that you hear out of an agent's mouth when you walk in is, hey, how are you doing? Great, uh, you working with an agent? I mean, so if I go out to a car lot and I'm looking to buy a car and the salesperson goes, oh, in the market for a new truck? The first thing I say is no, but he knows I'm not, that's, that's not true. Come on, I'm out there looking for a vehicle but he's not gonna give me his information because I've created a wall. You know, Start your open house marketing with a segment of what brings you out so you can target them specifically so you understand why they're there, how they hear about it. What brings you out? Did you see the signs? Did you see my marketing? Did you see the 15 signs I put around the neighborhood? Did you see it on my ad online? That's the kind of things I'm talking about that drive traffic and marketing. The fourth one is really easy to acquire through, through your marketing efforts when done right. And frankly, more than that. The fifth one comes from marketing in the neighborhood, okay? Your fifth transaction is you're trying to get another listing in the neighborhood. Every goal when we were listing agents and when we're listing is to get another listing in the neighborhood. And it's not as hard as people think. So one of the things that we do is we have this simple crazy flyer and really it does not look real fancy, but it's all call to actions, targeted marketing, it's got information about home sales and an invitation to the open house. And one of the things that we employ is that we go out or we have our team go out and we have them put it on 25, 30 doors the Friday before the weekend open houses. And it's an invitation to all the neighbors to come over because they're going to come looky loo anyway. They're going to come poke around. They're going to end up 
sneaking in anyway. So just give them an invitation. It'll bring more people out. What ends up happening with that marketing is some people come through the open house and it's an opportunity to build a relationship with them. So the key is to get those people in. Now, when I say door to door, here's what's crazy. People get scared and they get focused on, oh man, I, that's not me. I don't want to go. That doesn't work. That's old school. I'm not talking about knocking on people's doors. We don't knock on anybody's doors. We simply invite them to the open house and we give them a piece of information about neighborhood sales so that they can understand what's going on in their market. Because they're gonna to wanna to know. Everybody wants to know where their house sits. And they will come over be, with an invitation. It's crazy when you invite people how they'll come over. Um, so the fifth goal is to get that neighborhood listing, is to get your clients to tell you about the neighbors that are thinking about selling when they talk to them. It's to get it through your marketing from your door to door. Now, without question, we definitely will at the end of a sale and we've sold it, take that same flyer and turn it into a sold piece of information, basically convert it from an invitation to a sold piece of marketing, update the sales statistics in the neighborhood and go hand it back out to them. Now I want to talk to them on a Saturday and tell them about the home that we sold. And by the way, is there anybody that they know, any friends or family that is looking to buy in the neighborhood? Or, Usually what happens from that question is, is they usually say, I, I've been thinking about selling because you're going to have a list of buyers. So you're going to have a true piece of information that a seller wants, which is I've got people looking to move in this neighborhood. Okay. Now you want to go out and talk with the community a little bit. What happens is people, agents get into this. Agents get into mass marketing, mass mailers. You know, let me send out 500 postcards about the just listed, just sold back to me marketing. That's, I'm just being candid here. That's back to me marketing. When, when you target market, when you go after the close knit people in the community in a few homes and you spend the time going door to door to those people at the end of the sale, it will lead to another transaction. We do it all the time. We've done it for years. So, I mean, that's your five right there. Now, to share with you candidly, we generally get more than that amount of sales from one listing. I mean, there's times where the accountability comes in and we don't, and we end up with three or four. But when you take, when you unpack this entire system and you utilize it in your, in your, in your business every day, it's going to change what you do. I, I guarantee you, your business will grow from that listing. People, listing agents, people that list properties, they get too focused on the sale and they forget about the opportunity, but yet they whine that all of the leads and the opportunities that are lost through Zillow and other advertisers that are better marketers. But they fail to realize a listing is a significant marketing piece if you do it right. So that's kind of the, the base premise of the one to five system, John. I love it. That's awesome. I've got some good notes and some, and some points. Um, so I'll come back around. I'll, you know, I want to hit on all of these and, and have you unpack and dig a little bit deeper. Um, Brett Jennings asked um, if you could uh, share a, a sample of the um, a sample of that open house, that marketing piece that you send out to capture the number five. Yep. If you'd be able to, to post that and share it in the group. Without question. Okay, cool. And then um, real quick, um, recap all five of those again for everybody. So the first one is the sale of the property with your client, Yep. which isn't a given. The second one is the seller, your client, is a buyer. That's two, right? Third is the client referral, getting a referral from your client because you have just given them an exceptional experience yep. and asking at the right times. The fourth comes from your marketing to drive people to the property to get buyers through open house signage, et cetera, right? Yep. And maybe even some neighborhood marketing as well. And the fifth is the number one, even though it's the last item on the list, get another listing in the neighborhood by getting out and talking to the people in the neighborhood and asking your client again, who did you talk to? about this listing that you can put me in touch with. Every time someone's going to say to them, I've been thinking about selling. Uh, yeah, I've been, we've been kicking around selling. What are you selling for? They're going to know. Ask them to put you in front of them. 
That's awesome. Thanks for, thanks for recapping that. So yep. uh, Brett, thanks for asking the questions for any of you guys on, if you have any questions, hit us up in the chat and we'll answer them. I've got some things for Jarrett while uh, we're waiting for any questions to come in, but um, unpack a little bit on getting the buy-in from your clients to be able to position the home a few percentage points below the pricing um, to where you believe it's going to sell to get the most eyeballs. Just kind of unpack that and kind of what that conversation, how you get the sellers to buy in on that. Yeah, that's a, that's a good one because it's obviously the key starting of the marketing mm -hmm. of the business and the listing. So what I will do too is I will share uh, for everybody that's watching here, I'll share the pricing pyramid in there so you can actually see it because I don't want to get into quoting numbers that I might mistake. But here's, here's the way it works is that when you use the pricing pyramid and once you get below the market, um, below the market, uh, actual market value, and that's not what you believe the market value is. That's actual what sale value is. Once it's about three to 5% below that price, the amount of looks on it and traffic to that property, it goes up like 78%. When you price a home at market value, even in today's aggressive market, the study shows that less than 8% of people look at it. Everybody wants to believe they're going to get a deal, but here's what ends up happening. When everybody gets involved and you looks like what's going to be a deal, it's going to be driven up because there's going to be three or four people that want that property, right? They're going to want it. So that, that's the, that's the key marketing. The other part of that is, is that pricing strategy. And if you're asking more about how to position it to the client is it's simple. I want to drive more people to look at your property. And I know, and when you have this diagram, I'll, I'll send the, the one page flyer over to everybody. But when you look at it and you share it with your client and go, look, this is a study right here. This is a statistic. I mean, and if we do this properly, more offers, you're going to get more offers and you're going to get more money. I mean, that's really what happens. Awesome. It's awesome. So I'm that, still here. I see my. Uh, yeah, I'm good. The the other was on on the client referral, and um, I, I just made me think. We, for those of you that know Michael Reese, uh, we we have what we call the the laws of Mike, right? And um, he's got a bunch of them. And one of them is if you don't ask, you don't get, right? So um, I loved what you said there, asking and making sure you ask. One of the things too. Um, that I love that you shared, and this is just, a, I just want to highlight this point, is that you really want to make sure that when you, when you are asking, you're asking at where it's the highest probability that they're going to say yes. And um, Digital Marketer talks about it. It's like, do not ask for the referral unless you know with absolute certainty you are going to get it. And so that was just, um, I'm, glad, I'm glad you hit on that and because that, that, that's really key. And so sharing that you found at the beginning of the relationship and then also during the contract phase um, shows shows to be the best. So that was great. Um, and then, you know, share a little bit because when, when you said about the writers, right, it goes back even to copywriting, right? You know, it doesn't matter. the, the co It's all in the headline, right? And right. so using that top writer, if you think of it from a, a copywriting perspective, that that is your headline, and what are you using? And so share again with everybody what those, uh, what those key headlines that you guys have seen to pull the best um, from, your, from your signs. So I think in terminology, generally what you'll see is, uh, I'll, I'll talk about two parts of writers. I don't know if I'll answer the question, but price to sell is a key, a key, a key one. And then a key feature in the home, right? So whether it's a neighborhood where, or a community where people are typically looking for larger homes with five bedrooms, every market's different, or that it's a neighborhood or an area of the country where people are looking for pools and it's a key element, or they're looking for an oversized uh, garage or RV parking or all those, that you have to have the key one draw to that community. You need to understand, obviously as an expert, what that one draw to that local neighborhood and community is and market that on the signage. The price to sell part comes in because what ends up happening is, is that they can't get a flyer, right? Well, I'm not putting flyers on them. We're going to force them to go call 1-800 in this extension to get a recorded commercial or to simply end up texting in to do the same thing, which is capture them and then follow up. Um, you know, interestingly, I will share a couple of things that are a no-no. And I would just, this is can't, just being 
from a listing experience. Yep. Uh, reduced, wrong. The last thing that you, and I'll explain that further. Reduced, uh, under contract, pending, wrong, all bad. Here's why. And agents do it. That's me marketing. I hate to say it again, but I'm just calling it what it is. That's me marketing. You're shutting off the flow of traffic. Now, why are you going to do that when you have a sign out front? Why are you going to tell people this property is not available anymore? Don't bother me. Because you're sending the wrong message. You're going to have the opportunity to turn, tell the neighbors, don't worry. See, what happens is, is agents think, well, I want to tell everybody in the neighborhood that I've sold this house as quick. No, you don't. You're going to go do that door to door. Right. You're going to do that through a postcard series and then maybe door to door. Don't, don't shut off the flow of traffic and opportunity to the listing that you worked hard to get. That's kind of my point there. And those two writers are killers in doing that. Don't do that. I mean, because consumers and people are visiting from out of town. There's holidays. Things are going on. They drive down the street and they inquire because maybe they're thinking about moving. I can't tell you the amount of people that we've had to have done that. And I mean, nobody calls when it says pending. I mean, nobody calls. Now, if you have a situation in today's market, a lot of places you're doing rent backs, right? With people moving, they're having to sell and buy and find a property. So there's rent backs in a lot of markets. But in that scenario, I think a good tactic is during that period to put a sold up there as you're going out to the neighborhood. That sold is key. Uh, but don't shut off the flow of traffic instantly um, through what I call, again, me marketing. What do you, um, what is your take on inside of the neighborhood if, if you're not able to get the listing, but you get a buyer to help another? I know this strategy worked really well for, um, for, for Alex. Um, for those of you that know Alex, um, here with us in, in Frisco was in, you know, had his business booming in Connecticut. But what he does in his buyer representation agreements that he has it written in that he gets to keep um, a yard, the yard sign in their yard for the next 10, 14 days after close of escrow. So he still has that exposure. I don't know, kind of, kind of what what your yep. thoughts to leave that in there while you're doing your hustle um, as well to 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 garner some some additional possible dis, additional traffic. Right, that's that's huge, and I've I've seen that. And to be candid, they haven't employed it, but I've seen it employed, and it works great. Again, it's just further exposure. Right. So it, again, in a multiple offer situation, it's positioning and leveraging yourself to a scenario of hey, I want to be able to put and keep this sign up here. Um, for a period of time. It's smart. I mean, smart marketing, smart marketers win. I love it. I love it. And, um, touch a little bit more on and And I saw, I saw Brett pop up and, but it, it's, um, okay. you know, it, un, it, you know, value unarticulated is value unappreciated, right? It's one of, that's one of Brett's, <laughs> one of Brett's things. And so, um, you know, you were talking about how important it is to make sure that you articulate your pre-marketing plan, because if you don't articulate the plan, then you can't get them on board or buy, buy again. So um, I thought that was a key point that you made. And if you want to, uh, um, you know, touch on that again, again, I think that's, that's key for everybody to get. Yeah. And, and the one part cut out, I'm sorry, the last part, what was the part just prior to that? I got articulate what part? Um, just articulating that pre-marketing plan to get them on board um, in, into the efforts. And it's just with anything, right? If you don't communicate and articulate your plan, how can you expect anybody to get on board with it? So right. touch on that a little bit more because I thought that was a real key point for everybody to pick up in their presentations. Yeah, it is a key point. And I think it's overlooked a, a lot. So um, I kind of refer to it as a one, one page marketing plan and a, and a seller instructions. Uh, the seller instructions set the tone of the plan and without a plan i mean i don't know how you expect to accomplish it i mean that's just simply the, right. the, how that works but more importantly again is that if you lay out a time frame if you lay out what a client can expect and why you're doing certain things they go along with it so on the pre-marketing part of it i'm talking about you know the difference of throwing a property in the mls on a friday and putting it on the market on a tuesday and having no showings until the weekend. That's yeah. marketing. Having no, having limited access, but your, your clients are agreeing to this. These aren't ethical violations. They're, this is all part of the marketing and the exposure. That you make it clear that you're not gonna accept an offer for the first three business days. And the seller agrees to that. Yeah. Because of exposure. You want exposure. You want exposure not only for your marketing, but your client. Really, at the end of the day, we can talk about marketing and building our business, but it's about the client. And if you want to get a client top dollar, um, 
taking the first thing that comes in just because it's over asking is not probably the best deal. It really isn't. That's right. Uh, and I'm telling you, if you get something right away and it's, it's a really great offer right off the bat and you jump on it, there's probably three other people that would pay more. So I think that might be possibly a disjustice depending on the circumstances of your client, sure. but it might be a disjustice to, to your client, which is first and foremost. So usually what we do on a marketing plan in that regards is we set up about a seven day exposure. So we want to list on a Tuesday or Wednesday in the MLS have the property open Saturday and Sunday. Vary the hours. Sometimes we'll do, we'll do a, a two to four or two to five on a Saturday. And then we'll do a, a noon to three on Sunday. We want varying hours. We want to draw, again, that's marketing, right? Everybody does generally a one to four. They have a, a community, has a certain neighbor. We want to vary that. We want to be there longer than some on another day so that those people that might be straggling around come through, through our signage and our marketing. Yep. And then we also want to catch up early on. But part of that, that pre-marketing plan is being able to get everything prepped and ready to expose it also through photography, through online, through Facebook ads, boosted posts, all those different things. Again, that's helping the client and helping you earn more. That's really the goal. Um, those are kind of the key elements that are in there. Um, you know, there's some other little things that, and again, I'm happy to share that document as well, that seller instruction sheet, uh, and people can have that and use it for what they want and they can edit it. Um, but, but those are kind of the key elements. It's about setting the expectations to clients of why you do these things, which also talk about why I don't put flyers out front, et cetera. That's awesome. And um, no, man, I, I really appreciate that. That's, um, I mean, that's, that's really what this whole expert mentors live and, and, and having, you know, you on, you know, Michael last week and, and Rowena, you know, the week before and the lineup that we have coming is just, I mean, you guys, you guys are amazing and, and just, just adding value and giving back. Um, we do have a question um, coming in from from David and he said how would you handle 55 plus gated community no no lawn sign no soliciting yeah those become a little bit of a challenge a little bit more tricky because of the no lawn sign and the marketing restrictions or the gate access you know and so generally the way that we would do those is that's going to take groundwork okay that's going to take ground footwork in other words we're going to be more active in the neighborhood community because we can um, but also for driving traffic in there, sometimes those get limited on the ability to even do open houses or being able to drive traffic in there. So then you have to go to an online media. You have to really focus on probably an ad to drive people there. Um, but that's really what you have to do when it's limited. Um, I haven't seen a whole lot. I know there are some out there where they won't even allow a sign on the property. Um, or they have a very specific branded sign. Um, they're taking away your marketing and your efforts. I mean, there's no way to get around it. What I would do is spend more efforts on the ground boots in the community. And I would spend more time online driving a strategy of people there to get them to an open house if you could do it. And to get them through the marketing in that regards. Or just to do the same thing. Get the lookers through Facebook and through that through ads to get them looking at the property. Um, and candidly, my strategy probably would be is that I would probably set that property up with very specific showings and access through myself. That's probably what I would do is I would probably use a strategy of the exclusivity and shown by appointment only. That's probably what I would do the community like that. Gotcha. So great. Uh Great answer. Thanks. Thanks for uh, David for sending that question in. Um, you know, the, yeah. I think a lot of that strategy too could tie into what Michael and Woods were talking about last week as well. Right. You know, getting in and, and talking to the, to the influencers, um, a part of that community and, and getting it everything out on Facebook. And, you know, um, so a lot of what they talked about last week, I think can really tie in, tie into that can tie into everything that you're even talking about here as well. So this is a, uh, this has been fantastic. I've got a, I've got a question that um, has kind of like been my favorite question to ask folks is what is uh, what's, what's the one question that uh, no one asks you that you wish they would. Huh. 
boy, the stumper, huh? <laughs> um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. Uh, the one I don't think I ever hear, which is crazy from anybody, is, is what do you love about real estate? I think that's probably the one, you know, yeah. because, I mean, we're a real estate family, my wife and I, but I love real estate, you know, and I, I wish more people would ask why, you know, or ask, uh, ask that question, right? So what is it? What do you, what do you love about real estate? You know, why, what's, what's cool about that? Because, you know, there's all kinds of aspects that are awesome. I mean, I, the incredible opportunity to help people is amazing. So that's, that's probably the question. And hopefully that's kind of some insight to what I would like to, to be asked because it's been a lot of years for me and a lot of different paths uh, from owning our own company to, you know, being with the national franchises to landing here and in, in love with EXP. So we, uh, that would probably be it. You know, why, why real estate or, you know, why after all these years you're, you're still doing this? Cause it's, it's a tough grind, but when you love it and you're passionate, uh, it's the most, uh, it's the most rewarding opportunity. Um, I think in business that you could ever have both financially and personally. That's awesome. I love that. So what can, um, what, what can the group, what can we do to help add value back to you? You know, I think really the value is being added every day. You start with the two speakers that, that were before us and the ones that are to come. I mean, that's, that's the value of me, the exciting opportunity to listen to people that are top at the game that have specific things that they do in their business or in their lives. I mean, sometimes we're a little focused on, you know, the business and growing, but it's also interesting to learn about people's lives. Uh, what, what makes them tick, right? Yeah. What, uh, besides real estate drives their motor. So, um, you know, for me, uh, honestly, the excitement for me and the give back to me is being here, being a part of the honey badgers, uh, being here and having a scenario where we made a really long, challenging, emotional decision to be a part of EXP and to do what we're doing. And, and it wasn't easy, but it's probably the most exciting. Uh, it's probably the most exciting time, honestly, I've ever had in real estate if I was to be completely candid. That's awesome, man. Great to, great to have you on board. I'm glad you made that decision. And, uh, Appreciate you definitely adding value. What, um, what's the best way for people to get in touch with you if they've got more questions or, or, or any more advice to dive in deep on, on your uh, one to five? Um, so a couple of things. So two parts to that is look me up online, Facebook, private message. I've, I run probably most of my stuff through my own personal page, uh, but I do have a business page out there. That's probably the best way. Uh, send me a private message through Facebook. It seems like everybody on the planet is. Obviously, my email is jarrett.gent at exprealty.com. Send me any questions, anything. I will share with you that I am going to do a little bit more unpacking of this training system and the marketing behind it, meaning like how to do an open house and turn it into a, a multiple, multiple transactions, how to drive more than five deals out of a property in a listing, even if it's not your own listing, actually. That's coming up here real soon. So if there's anybody listening that's interested in learning, uh, learning what isn't true that we love to hear, which is open houses don't work. I love that. For all you people that think open houses don't work, thank you. Thank you. But for me, um, if you want to learn a system that works, uh, that will drive people to an open house and you'll pick up listings and opportunities in the neighborhood and sales, we're going to actually show you a live, uh, we actually, uh, open house that we just recently did. We're going to show you the results of that. And one of them includes 900,000 listing that my wife took. How about that for an open house? So that's a pretty great deal. looks like we might've had a question there too, but um, anyway, but yeah, that's, that's, that's it. That's awesome. So Maria, yes. Um, if you will look into the Honey Badger Facebook group, um, there are, they are posted in there. So Rowena Patton um, and uh, Michael Reese and Woods Davis were last week. Uh, Jarrett is, is our third. Um, we've got um, Kyle Whistle up, um, on the calendar, Mary Simmons Maloney and Daniel Beer, Al Stasic, 
Um, that's, um, that's, that's kind of the lineup, um, coming at you guys over the next, uh, three, four weeks. So you definitely want to make sure you have your calendar set and tune in. I know that uh, we are going to take all of these calls and get them loaded into the export mentors tool. So that's, that's the goal of where they will all live to where you can access those at, at any time at greater ease than just, um, searching into, um, the Facebook group, but that's where they're at right now. Um, Patrick Lee, so um, read your question here. So our Friday listings remain on our MLS hot list for the whole weekend while weekday listings only stay on the hot list for 24 hours. What are your thoughts on this compared to your Tuesday listing plan? Yeah, the, the, that, the, the fall off the hot sheet is I think what the question is there. Yes, yes. Um, but here's the thing, if you're doing the right marketing, you're still going to get the, the most exposure because usually what we do, if that wasn't clear before, is we limit the access to the property through our seller instructions uh, to probably the first open house um, during that weekend is really kind of the key there. So yes, I think there's probably a bit of an effect on there, but I think, I mean, I wouldn't, we just don't really condone listing a property, setting it on the market. And then just kind of saying, yeah, here, come open the door whenever you're ready. Now, every market's a little different on timing, time on market. So you have to be careful on the strategy. But at the end of the day, this is also a convenience factor to the client, right? When you explain to the client, look, do you want to be opening your house at 8 o'clock at night and taking the dog for a walk? Or be bothered with a ton of different calls? Or would you like to just get the masses of people through while you go see a movie or go on a date night or something of that nature? Yep. So hopefully that answered that part. Yep. Great. Uh Great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for the questions. So, um, you know, it looks like we're, we're coming in here and um, towards the top of the hour. Jarrett, appreciate you, man. Thank you. Amazing call. Um, really, thank you for adding value and really being a true expert mentor and teaching us all really how to leverage our listings to get more sales. So for all of you guys on the call, tuning in, listening to the recording, Man, share with us in the Honey Badger, in the Honey Badger Facebook group, what was uh, your one thing or your biggest takeaway um, from today's training with, from, from Jarrett. So um, appreciate you guys. Um, thanks. Please feel free to reach out to me um, if, for any questions or if you would love to, to be an expert mentor and add value to the, to the group in the future. Awesome. Cool. Awesome. Thanks, Jarrett, man. Appreciate it. See you guys. Take care.